Good morning. Welcome to worship at Eden United Church in Mississauga, Ontario on this Sunday, September the 19th, 2021. My name is Reverend Jan McCormick. I am the Supply Minister here at Eden. Welcome to all members of the Eden Family of Faith and welcome to those from far and near who join us for worship this day. It is a pleasure and a privilege to worship together. We begin with the acknowledgement of the land upon which we gather. As we begin today, we acknowledge the history, spirituality, culture, and the stewardship of the land of the indigenous peoples of this region. We thank the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron of Wendat peoples, as well as the Mississaugas of the Credit, whose ancestors have lived here for thousands of years. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship upon the traditional territory of these peoples. We are mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. On the third Sunday of this season of creation, the theme is peacemaking as home building. How can we achieve peace in our world? Jesus taught that when we love and serve others rather than our own desires, then we will find peace. The Hebrew word shalom is often translated as peace. In this context of shalom, peace is much more than the absence of conflict. Peace involves our relationship with God, our relationship with others, and with ourselves. Shalom means that all of our relationships meet God's wishes for the world. The scripture passage from Proverbs describes a faithful woman. This scripture was intended to be a poetic tribute to a woman who exhibits the wisdom of servanthood. She gives of herself and her gifts fully. This passage was never intended to be an overwhelming expectation but rather a model to work toward. In the letter of James, the author calls his listeners to humility, authenticity, and peace, three gifts of wisdom from above. Both scripture passages contain references to fruit. At this time of the year, we are blessed with an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables in our local markets. The kind of seeds that are planted determine the kind of fruit that grows. We will not find an apple on a pear tree or a grape on a tomato plant. God teaches us to be wise and to plant seeds of peace with our words and our actions, our choices, so that there will be a harvest of peace and goodness for everyone in the world. God's wisdom nourishes compassion, respect, and gentleness, all of which contribute to the settling of disputes and the creation of peace. Let us quiet our hearts and minds for worship as we light 
the Christ candle. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let them be afraid. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let us join together in the call to worship. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. As we come into God's presence, the Spirit is speaking words of wisdom. The Spirit calls us to kindness and peace. Wisdom calls us to service and love. Come. Let us worship the one who brings us peace. Please join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray together. O Lord, open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so that they need not be without support. Let me not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show me where love and faith and hope are needed, and use me to bring them to those places. And so open my eyes and my ears, that I may be able to do some work of peace for you. Amen. Let all creation sing for the Lord And every nation of the earth rejoice Let all the trees lift a shout of joy For the Lord is King Let the deep waters of the sea resound Let every mountain, every hill sing out Let all the fields make a joyful sound For the Lord is King
If you've been watching my Time for All Ages videos for a while, you'll know that I love getting outside and exploring. I love spending time in nature and on the water. Last week, I shared some lessons I had learned from creation, but this week, I wanted to take a moment to pause and listen to the story creation is telling us in its own words. Sometimes we can be so busy and focused on what we need to do in our lives that we forget to sit back and take in creation. So today, I invite you to take a few moments and hear as creation speaks to you. Please pray with me. Loving God, thank you for all the beauty in your creation, from the rushing wind to the flow of water, the chirp of birds, and the sparkle of the setting sun. Help us to listen to the story creation tells us each day. Guide us as we work towards respecting and protecting your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer for Illumination. Let us pray. Creator of all, you call us to peace and gentleness, kindness and mercy, goodness and service. Help us to be wise and understanding. Help us to understand that wisdom does not just come from hearing the word, but from embracing the word in humility and love. Help us to serve one another through the wisdom of the word. Amen. The Hebrew Testament reading is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31 from the New Revised Standard Version. A capable wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. 
Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband, too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. And the epistle reading is from James chapter 3, verse 13, through to chapter 4, verse 3, and 7 to 8a, again from the New Revised Standard Version. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. This is the word of the Lord. May God bless it to our understanding. Amen.
What are you grateful for? My list is probably just about as long as yours, and I suspect that we might have similar things on our lists. We're grateful for our family, a trusted friend, a good night's sleep, a beautiful sunset, a delicious meal, and so on. But being thankful is not enough. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine that every drop of water that I pour into this glass represents something that you are grateful for. As I pour, I invite you to pour out your thanksgiving. Let your prayers of thankfulness flow to God. Let's take a moment of silence so that we can focus as we pray. We have filled the glass with our thankfulness, but in truth there is no limit to God's abundance, no end to God's blessing. Think of all the ways in which we are deeply and richly blessed. We are filled to the brim with God's blessing. But God's blessing has no limitations. God's blessings to us overflow. How do we let our thankfulness, our gratitude, spill out of us. It is one thing to be thankful. It is another to live our lives in the spirit of thanksgiving. Just as the water overflows the glass, the wisdom of the capable wife, described in Proverbs 31, overflows in all aspects of her life. It's rather hard to take it all in. This scripture passage has often been used in worship on Mother's Day to describe an exemplary mother or at a funeral to describe a deceased wife and mother. It suggests that women should strive to live up to an overwhelming ideal, an impossible job description which supports the social pressure to be a super mom. I prefer to interpret this passage as a parable. Just as Jesus' parables turned the social norms upside down to get his listeners' attention, the author of Proverbs describes an unbelievable woman to emphasize a point. A capable woman who can find gives this away. Capable is the word that is used in the New Revised Standard Version translation. The Hebrew could also be translated as a woman of worth. After asking the question, the author of Proverbs begins a lengthy poem which describes all the features of a woman of wisdom. The poem also describes the nature of the relationship between the woman and her husband, her children, her employees, and her business partners, as well as her relationships with the community around her. In effect, her relationship with the household of God. What if the marriage mentioned in this poem was not a marriage 
between a man and a woman, but a metaphor for the covenant between God and humanity. If that were the case, then humanity would be the capable wife. The woman of worth described in Proverbs is a woman of action. There is nothing passive about the description. This person works with willing hands. She provides, she makes, she reaches out, and she supplies. Wisdom is personified in a woman of integrity, energy, industry, creativity, and compassion. Despite its patriarchal tone, this passage is not a comparison between wisdom and her husband, or wisdom and anyone else. Comparison would imply some sort of opposition. But what characterizes the relationship described in this scripture passage is mutual support. The relationship is generous and empowering. It flows from each to the other and it overflows into blessings on everyone associated with the relationship, family and community. This is not a description of a wife who is subservient to her husband. This is a description of a partner which creates an overflow of blessings, much like the water in the glass. A capable wife who can find. Wisdom is not easy to find. It involves a diligent search, but once wisdom is attained, it is far more precious than jewels. Kenneth Carter Jr. wrote in Feasting on the Word, quote, Embedded in these words are the values that sustain our lives, our minds, our bodies, our souls. Trust and integrity in personal relationships. Sacrifice. Going the extra mile. Providing for our families. Opening our hands to the poor. Doing whatever needs to be done. And yet doing it with a sense of humor. Because, really, what is the alternative? End quote. This poem invites us all to search for wisdom as if we were searching for a precious, invaluable gem, and to live committed to the path of wisdom with the loyalty and allegiance of a person beginning life with a blessed partner. Because wisdom has provided everything for everyone, no tragedy can disturb the equanimity of her family. Can you imagine how peaceful our world would be if everyone strived to live life as this woman of worth did. The letter of James has been described by some biblical scholars as the wisdom book of the New Testament. The author of the letter is unknown. We also don't know who was the intended recipient or recipients of the letter. Some scholars suggest that the letter of James was written by James, younger brother of Jesus, who led the church in Jerusalem for some time after Jesus' death. Whoever the author was, the section of the letter we read today begins with a challenging question. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. James suggested that there are two types of wisdom, earthly wisdom and divine wisdom. Wisdom that comes down from above. True wisdom involves the integration of thought and action. Wisdom created through our relationship with God is manifest in our lives as gentleness, humility, peaceable behavior, 
a willingness to yield, extending mercy, free of hypocrisy or favoritism or bias. These are difficult traits for anyone to live into. Do you know anyone who would fit this description? Just as the woman of worth in the Proverbs passage seemed impossible to imagine, so does the wise person James described. The next question James asked is, from what do conflicts and disputes arise? It seems that James attributed conflicts to unfulfilled desires to have something that belongs to someone else. This is true of disputes between nations, which is usually about resources or land, and it is true of disputes between people. The materialistic society in which we live is based on our desire to have what others have. Advertisers market a product by telling us that we have to have it. We have to have it to fit in, to show our status, or to be happy. I invite you to really listen to commercials on the radio or television or on the internet this week. Will this product make you more attractive or more healthy, more desirable, more impressive? Does this advertisement compare one product to another and undervalue the competitor's product? I enjoy watching some home and garden television network home renovation shows. I like to see the design ideas. But one thing that bothers me greatly is programs in which two people are searching for a huge home and their must-have list includes several bathrooms, several bedrooms, an office, a den, a media room, a home gym, etc., and so on, and so on. I grew up in a family of seven. We lived in a home with one bathroom. We all got to work or school on time every day, and we were all clean and well-groomed. I shared a bedroom with my sister. Those circumstances meant that we learned to cooperate and compromise. I have participated in mission work in Central America, and I have visited homes in which the bedroom, the whole living space, is smaller than my living room. An entire family lived in that small space. What surprised me was that there was very little conflict within those families. The people were very happy, despite the fact that they had very few possessions. In this letter, James asked a third question. What does God want? God desires a loving relationship with humanity. God desires that humanity live as God created us in God's image. An image of love and service to others. God desires that humanity live together in peace and harmony and love. God is saying, let the love I pour into you pour out from you to others. It is one thing to be thankful. It's another thing entirely to live in the spirit of thankfulness. There is someone on a road somewhere in your life who needs the overflow of your love. Amen.
Although we are worshiping virtually, the costs of maintaining the church building and its programs does not change. Thank you to everyone who has continued to contribute on a regular basis through e-transfer or PAR or by depositing a check in the secure box outside the church office. If none of those options will work for you, perhaps you would like to mail a check to Eden United Church. You will find the correct mailing address on the church website. With the woman in Proverbs, who is far more precious than jewels, let us open our hands to the poor and our hearts to the needy. May we sow seeds of peace in the world through our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Let us pray the offering prayer together. God of love and service, we thank you for loving and serving us. Bless our gifts and distribute them in your wisdom and your understanding, we pray, that they may sow seeds of peace, mercy, and justice in your world. Draw near to us, O God, that our lives may be offerings of love and service. Amen. We continue in prayer as we pray for ourselves and one another. Let us join together in the pastoral prayer. We live in a world, O oh God, that looks for wisdom and understanding in all the wrong places. You teach us that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, and yet we strive for these things. Jesus used the word shalom, which is often translated to us as peace. Shalom means peace in the sense that all is right in our relationships in our relationship with you, in our relationships with others and ourselves, and in our relationships with the creatures of the earth. Help us to restore the relationships in our lives that need restoring, we pray. When we strive for worldly recognition and the accolades of power and wealth, forgive us. When we allow ourselves to be blown around like tumbleweeds in the wind, ground us. When we follow the advice of the wicked, lead us back to the paths that bring us life. God of peace, we pray for those whom we know and those whom we do not know, who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those whose lives are burdened by loss or heartache, for those who are struggling with illness or pain, all those who are carrying hidden sorrows. We pray that you will grant strength and healing. We pray for all members of the Eden family of faith, our families, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. We pray in particular this day for everyone named on the list of requests for prayers that has been circulated. As we prepare to vote tomorrow, Help us, God, to make the wise choice. Help us to discern the best path forward for our nation and the best person to lead us on that path. As part of the regional prayer cycle, we pray for the ministry and mission of Central United Church in Welland. We bring these prayers to you along with prayers which remain unspoken. We pray in silence for those concerns which weigh heavy on our heart today. Trusting that you have received all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, with mercy and grace, we pray in the name of the Christ within us and among us, who taught his followers to pray this way. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, pain-bearer, life-giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The 
the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your beloved community of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, embracing simple, quiet pleasures, so that we can be rested and renewed, gathering our cares and our sorrows, so intertwined with our joys, and weaving them together, so that we might bless and serve others on this day and every day. Go into the world in peace, for the love of God is ours to share. The peace of Christ is ours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. And everyone said together, Amen.